And the Ducks will put total leather to crank us up. And he takes this from inside the five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. So the Michigan State Spartans offense will get the first possession of the game. And there he is. When you build a tight end, you'd build one just like this, especially with those reliable mitts, Jesse. Yeah, Reese, he makes big plays in big games. Watch for him on third down in the red zone. He has a chance to leave an impact in this game. Well, it's so nice to have such a big body that when he's covered, he's open, right? Like, it doesn't matter because he's got great hands and that big frame he can really utilize. This crowd bringing the energy and noise early. Leaves it with the back. That'll be a gain of about seven. Leaves him with third and three. Listen, I know that's not a huge gain, but those run plays add up. They make you tackle the back every single play. Physically, you have to get some guy on the ground. It takes its toll throughout a fourth quarter game. He'll try to move the chains on third and short from the 25. Looking for a man. It's Childs. Looking to buy time. Trying to escape and get it himself. Picks up the first down and gets down to avoid contact. It's just so hard defensively to take your eye off this guy, especially on third down. You've got to know that at any given moment, he can take off on you. They've got to do a better job on the back end, keeping their focus on him. He's the one with the football, and they've got to be able to react, or else they're going to get gashed like they did right there. Looking for a gap. It's Carter. Runs through a tackle. And a nine-yard gain on first down leaves him with second and short. Well, it's plays like that that'll help this offense stay in rhythm all game long. If you can have that kind of success on first down running the football, it just opens up your entire playbook moving forward. That kind of pickup on first down, and you can take a shot here on second and short. He'll keep it himself. And he's brought to the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. There's an example of the offense taking advantage of all the attention the defense is giving this outstanding running back. Remember, he's one of the best in the game. They're expecting him to get the football. So the quarterback says, you know what? I'll just keep it. No one's keying on me. I'm going to get upfield and find an explosive play. They'll go to the ground. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, there's a statement by the defensive line. First down play, expecting run, and they just dominated up front. Beat their one-on-ones and forced a tackle for a loss. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. They'll ride the running back and leave it with it. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. Yeah, I think the running back kind of went rogue on that last running play. I'm not sure it was designed to go that direction. He tried to make it happen on his own and unfortunately ended up losing yards. The seventh play of this opening drive will be a third and long. Looking to throw and he needs a bunch. Fires on the move. Got his man to the left. Good execution. They move the sticks, and they've got it at the 33. This tight end just creates matchup problems no matter how you try to defend him. How about the catch radius on him, too? So as a quarterback, you don't have to be perfect when throwing it to him. You just got to get it somewhere in his vicinity, and he can come up with the catch. On the move. They'll pick up four, second and six coming. Nice run there on first down. You know, this is a running back that gets better as the game goes on. So they're going to want to make sure they keep feeding him the football, let him get lathered up. This crowd, full throat, splitting the eardrums and letting him know it's going to be a long day. They'll run it from the gun. Running with power. And the ball's on the ground. Defense falls on the ball. Going to be a turnover. Looks as if we have an injury on that last play, and we'll take a break to check him out. On first down, here comes this offense. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. 
And they'll finally get him down after a terrific pickup. And on that run, he shows you his speed, speed, speed. When I think Oregon Duck running backs, LaMichael James, Kenyon Barner, Jonathan Stewart, I think about guys that are burners, and when they got into the second level, they were gone. That's exactly what this guy is right here. They're going to ride this running back. And he was fortunate not to lose yardage on that play, able to wedge it back to the line of scrimmage. Great team defense on that one play. Everybody doing their job. People winning their one-on-ones. D linemen staying in their gaps. Linebackers and DBs filling. You just can't do it better. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. The give to the running back from the shotgun. Creating some space, getting just enough good blocking, and they've got it up to the 47-yard line. Hey, five to six yards a pop. I don't know if you guys are really good at math, but that usually equals a first down every couple carries. So don't forget about the run game. Keep them honest. Pound that rock. Line is set on third down. Moving the running back, trying to get the D to tip its hand. Spits it out to the back. Grab near the sticks. It's James. There to make the tackle, but the big throw is good enough to give them a first down. Yeah, and what a nice job finding your matchup, Palmer, on third down. Understanding I got a guy that can catch the ball in the backfield. Nice angle route, getting right there between the linebackers and getting the third down conversion. It was a really good job, too, David, of the running back that time, setting up like he was going to the flat, and the linebacker gets a little bit too excited. He then puts his foot in the ground, cuts back to the middle. It's an easy pitch and catch, and they get the first down. We've reached the end of the first quarter, and it has been a defensive battle, and the stats tell the tale so far. Let's see if the offenses can find a little rhythm here in the second. Went to the running game on first down. Now here they come again. Trying to impose their will with the run. One step, wrap, two step, squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. All right, well, the offense here, they're trying to get this run game established. They obviously don't break off a long run there, but they're just trying to find their footing at this point. They plow ahead with the run, but still more ground needed to pick up the first down. Third down coming. They'll move the running back to try to force the defense to adjust. And that's incomplete. A defender all over him. Knocked the ball to the ground. Fourth down coming up. Third and short in college football today. You see so much more pass than you used to. The offense stays aggressive. And I think they stay aggressive because they know they're in field goal range. They got that three in their back pocket. Now on fourth down, they'll send out the field goal unit. Going right down the boulevard. And with that, they break the seal on the scoring. It's 3-0. This is a team that really prides themselves on starting fast. We've seen that before, and here they are playing at home today. Nice job on the opening drive. Lots of poise, good emotion. They don't get the touchdown they would have liked, but they kick a nice field goal. They've got the lead. Head coach has to be happy. After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. On the run from inside his own five. And the coverage team gets the returner on the ground. Michigan State has the ball back, and here comes the offense. When you're playing from behind, you can't afford to give it up the way they did the last drive, David. No doubt. You cannot give the football away. Again, turnovers are the biggest stats in winning and losing games. You're behind, Palmer. Take care of the ball, but we got to go get a score here. Yeah, and they just got to do a better job executing. I like the game plan so far for them, but they just need to go out and do a better job connecting the dots. After picking up a couple at second and eight, Going to run it. It's Carter. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And a great job by the linebacker. You could tell, starting to crowd the line of scrimmage, get up there in the line of scrimmage, see it, diagnose it, get in the backfield, get the running back on the ground for the tackle for the loss. Here comes this home crowd as the defense tries to get off the field on third down. Looking downfield, it's Child. It's incomplete, but here comes the flag, and I think it's going to be a first down.
and the defender just way too handsy on that last play. You could see all the contact as the ball was in the air. He simply can't do it, and the referee's caught. Out of the gun, the inside handoff to the running back. Barrels all the way to the 29, a gain of six. I know it's sexy to throw the football, but if you can pound it away and get these kind of gains, they will just add up, wear the defense down, get first downs, and ultimately get some points. Six-yard pickup on first down. Leaves him with second and four. The give to the left side. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. It's amazing how play by a defensive end in the backfield can really swing the momentum not only of a series but of a game sometimes. All you're trying to do is create negative plays, to get them behind the sticks a little bit, to get those sacks, to get those tackles for losses. You see so much stunting in college football up front with the defensive line because you know once you get one of those plays, you got the offense right where you are. Didn't have much of a choice, just had to throw that one away. It'll be fourth down. And how nice is it to have the home crowd going absolutely bananas? Communication is harder. The, the snapping the football, everybody being on time. Man, this crowd really affecting the football. And the Spartans will call on their punt team. First time we've seen their punt team this afternoon. He's got great speed. That nifty return sets up the offense and negates some of the yardage on the punt. And Oregon has it back, and here comes the offense. Man, how comforting is it to know that even if your offense stalls out a little, Jesse, that field goal kicker can knock it in from a long way out. Well, he's one of the best in the country, Reese, no doubt. But this offense would like him and prefer for him to kick an extra point on this drive. And to do that, David, they've got to have more rhythm on it. Yeah, create some more rhythm, create some more explosive plays, and maybe some more balance. And listen, it's nice to have that weapon and kick long field goals. If you kick too many field goals, you don't get very many Ws. Fast motion from the offense. A jet sweep pass. Not a whole lot of progress made there on the short run. Well, and on these little push passes, timing is so important. You're trying to snap it right as he's getting a full head of steam. When he gets the ball, he's hitting the outside. And David, it puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You immediately have to be rotating when you see that motion. So everybody's got to communicate and kind of bump over. That's why offenses love to run it. Just It makes the defense communicate and see if you can just get him out of the spot. And they're able to shove him to the turf as they stop him for a short game. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. You saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. They haven't been physical. It's third down now. They ought to be able to get off one more play before the two-minute warning. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we'll see if the offense can build on this lead before the break. Here on third down. Scanning the field, it's Gabriel. And this sophomore able to wreak some havoc and get the sack. Just a great job defensively, making him go through his progressions, and he really didn't have time to do it. And that's exactly what you do in zone coverage. You drop in your spots, you read the quarterback's eyes, make sure you take away that quick stuff, and a great job rushing the passer and getting the sack. The Ducks will bring the punt team onto the field. First punt of the day, and he'd love to lock them up close to their goal line. The punt goes out of bounds, and a nice job to get them backed up. I think they'll spot it right around the 15. The Spartans have it back on offense, hoping to play some good ball. Feeling some hit. He's going to let one fly down the middle. And it's incomplete. They were looking for the huge gain on first down. And the offensive coordinator here is really trying to stay aggressive and take a shot. Obviously, the offense couldn't click on that one. But later in the game, if I'm this offense, I'm continuing to stay aggressive. Keep the foot down on the gas pedal. He'll try it again on second and ten. Getting some heat. That pass is incomplete, and they're probably fortunate that it wasn't knocked free for a fumble. 
Quarterbacks talk about it all the time. They love the clean pocket where they can step up, throw the football. That is not what they had. Nice job by the defense beating the offensive line, disrupting the timing, and getting a nice clean hit on the quarterback. On the run, it's Carter. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. The defense going to stop the clock with a timeout. They want to make sure they have everybody on the same page. The Spartans line up to punt it away. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Slips through the line. That's a perfect example of not settling for a fair catch. Pick up whatever yardage you can and help out the offense. They're going to throw it to start the drive. Pressure coming. Good job to toss that ball out of bounds and avoid the loss. And here's a great example of living to play another day. QB in the pocket, nobody open. Throw it out of bounds. Ball still at the 45. After the incompletion, they'll snap it second and 10. To the air, it's Gabriel coming after him. And a little too much adrenaline on that throw never gave his receiver a chance. Now facing a third and long. From the gun, wants to pass. They're trying to get to it. And they got him. They'll get him down for the sack. We've got a timeout here late in the first half, and they'll try to get more points on the board before the break. The Ducks will try to pin them back with the punt. Doesn't say much for your drive when you're looking forward to the punt. Not going to risk a return here. He'll make the fair catch. Quarterback by himself in the backfield. He wants to throw. Catch in the middle. It's Foster. How about the power there to get it across the 20 and up to the 21-yard line? Nice completion here to this wide receiver. And you're going to see this receiver line up in different spots all over the field all game long. Defense has got to keep their eye on where this guy is because they know he's a big part of this offensive success. Looking to throw on second down. And the ball is picked off. And he'll be brought down, and that's how we'll end the first half. We've played two quarters here. Time to go to Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Guys, a stirring start to things today in Eugene as we say hello from our broadcast studios. And it's been said football is a game of inches. And guess what? Based on the comparison between third down conversion rate today and the average yard per play, how can you argue that? I mean, the low-lying fruit is to look at some of the explosive plays we've seen in panic. But really, this game is going to come down to which team is more efficient when they have the ball and how they play when it matters most. With that said, let's send it back to the guys at Autzen Stadium. And the Spartans will kick it away first and will start the second half. He'll bring it back from inside his spot. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The Ducks ready to go back to work on offense. First play from scrimmage, and they'll keep it on the ground. Just searching and working for the running room as he gets it out to the 26. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains, and when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. After the nine-yard pickup on first down, here's second and one. From the gun, leaves it on the inside with the back. 
And he's tripped up, but not before picking up the first down. And this is a guy that can find you the hidden yardage. That play, he just pushes the pile to get that first down. They'll snap this one from the 30 on first and 10. They'll leave it with him. Still running at the 40. Finally run out of bounds, but he has his offense rolling with a first down. This is going to be a big key for him, David, with the lead here in the second half, running the football, right? Staying on the field and bleeding the clock. Yeah, run the football. You're ahead. You can be a little bit more conservative. But again, this opens up the pass. This keeps everything in balance for this offense. From the gun, the running back tries to hit the hole. Ran through the tackle, and he's got room to run. And he runs it in for the score. Touchdown, Ducks! You know they love their track at Oregon. And when the gun goes off and he hits open field, he is headed to the tape, and he was burning by the time he hit the end zone. And they've had guys year after year with serious track speed. They'll get you the small runs, lull you to sleep, and then boom. They make those big plays because they got big-time playmakers with speed at running back. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point will tack another one onto this lead. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And they close the deal with a scintillating 52-yard jaunt to the house. He'll start the return inside his five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Michigan State has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Here's the handoff. Tried to move that pile forward. He maybe gets two. He's down at the 21. They are trailing by 10 here, Jesse, but this is the type of team that seems comfortable in an offensive shootout. You got to hold serve at this point, right? You got to drive the field, put some more points up on the board. Yeah, they just scored. You can answer that now and keep this thing close, David. And I think you're used to that as offense. Like, football is so fast-paced now and you score so quickly, it's not that big of a deal to get down 10. You keep being you, keep being aggressive. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Man down on the play as the officials take a break to let him be checked out. And this offense is desperate to keep this drive alive, trailing by multiple possessions, and it's getting late. On third down, he drops the throw. Makes the grab. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. Well, look, that wasn't a touchdown, but that was a massive play for this offense. They needed some momentum. They needed to find a rhythm, and what better way than converting on third down? Awesome job by the quarterback getting through his progression. From the gun, running back on the move. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. Small gain, I know, but again, the defense knows he's going to run the football. He's willing to run the football, not just drop back and pass. Make him honor the run game. You've got to do a lot of this. The Spartans moving quickly to the line. Keeps it on the bootleg, looking to throw. With the catch, it's Brown. He's close to the first down, but they're going to mark him just a little short. My old coach said, you'll never go broke taking a profit. Take what's there, take the positive yards, and never complain. Come to the line at the 42, facing a third and short. They'll try to get the first through the air. Quarterback extends the play. He felt the heat trying to get away, but down he goes. He'll lose a yard or two. 
Well, with hindsight being what it is, 2020, you might have been better off just to try to get the yard. Instead, you really put yourself in a bad situation just eating it on that blitz. Maybe just being a little too aggressive offensively, right, Reese? I mean, you're in a third and one situation. Everybody in the stadium is expecting you to hand it off. So you try to sneak one by the defense and maybe take a shot. But the defense, they were one step ahead, dialing up the blitz and getting home for the sack. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. Boy, they had a chance to track that thing down, but it bounces into the end zone for a touchback. And Oregon has it back, and here comes the offense. From the shotgun, the inside give. They knock him down after a gain of three to the 23. You know, it's so important for offenses to want to keep third downs manageable. The way you do that is by having success like that, running the football on first down. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. From the gun, the running back looking for room. Finds his way ahead for five, and now they've got it at the 28. Well, this offense came into the game knowing they wanted to be physical, they wanted to establish the line of scrimmage, and they're running downhill right at this defense, and they're churning out positive yardage early. Looking for that first down on third and short from the 28. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. And sometimes for the defense, it just takes one play, right, to create some momentum. Obviously, this guy's been eating him up. He's got over 100 yards rushing on the day. But finally, David, they get something positive here in the run game defensively. But you kind of know that coming in. He's going to get his. Such a great back, and he's had a great day. Need to put more plays together like that right there. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll be content with the field position, making the fair catch right around the 30-yard line. They'll try the run. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. Well, I know this is an offensive line that has a ton of pride, and they want to come out each and every game and really impose their will on the D-line. They got just enough push there on that run play to pick up the first. Now on first down from the 43-yard line. Might as well run him until they stop him. He's got it again. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. They're trying to run the ball on first down, guys, but just nothing doing up front. Their offensive line got blown up on that play. There was nowhere for that guy to go. As they get set to snap at time, winding down here in the quarter. The give to the tailback. And they get him on the ground, and that'll probably do it for the third quarter. Time has expired here in the quarter, and Oregon has the lead. Three quarters are in the books. Time becomes a factor both in trying to hold the lead or cut into it as we take a look at the stats. One more period to go to see who can make the winning plays and come home with the victory. These fans stepping up to help this defense on third down. He's going to let one fly down the middle. And it was worth the gamble, but the long pass is incomplete. After that incompletion, fourth and short now on their own side of the field, I think there's a lot of coaches in normal circumstances that would stay conservative and just punt the ball away. But you're trailing here in the fourth quarter. I think the offense needs to stay out on the field. We got to go for it. Coach has no choice here. The offense has to stay on the field, down multiple possessions this late. Fourth down attempt coming. He's got him, and they convert. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. That's a great example of the receiver knowing exactly where the first down marker is. He got the depth he needed to get, so once he was able to make the catch, he already knew he had it. Now a fresh set of downs. He's going to pass. He just got rid of that one to save the down. Didn't see anything he liked. Another incompletion, and I've said that a lot. And these teams are just struggling. I mean, the offense just doesn't know what to do. Nothing's working. Ground game, throw game. It's kind of been a rock fight on both sides. Couldn't make the connection on first down. Now here on second. They want to just keep throwing it. 
Got it in the middle. It's Belly. They make the stop, but not before he sets them up with a first and goal from the 10. Man, that quarterback knew that was a tiny window to throw into, and he just showed off his cannon of an arm. And the Spartans trying to cash it in on first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. Forges ahead for one to the eight-yard line. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. Keeps it on the bootleg. Looking to the end zone. And it's caught! Touchdown, Sparty! Before that score, considering last rights, now all of a sudden, they're not dead yet. In fact, they're feeling much better, and they're alive, and they've got a chance. And I'm looking on the field right now. I'm looking at their sideline. They're energized, Reese. After that last score, all of a sudden, they believe they can come back and win this game. This is a totally different-looking team than what we saw earlier. PAT unit on the field. And with the extra point, every little bit counts as they get closer. A 67-yard touchdown drive there. And they finish things off with an 8-yard toss for the score. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. Here he comes from inside his own five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. The Ducks ready to go back to work on offense. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and every possession seems like it could switch the momentum of the game. Yeah, Reese, for this offense, just feels like they just haven't been as physical. And for this offensive coordinator, David, he's having to go deep into the playbook just to try to generate a first down. Well, and the good thing is there's not a ton of game pressure because the other side's not scoring either. But if you can find that one thing that get that one positive play and then maybe you get those juices going and something can start to build. Yeah, it's a bit of a surge and he's knocked down after picking up three to the 26. They're going to keep this drive going. They'll have to make a play on third and long from the 26. Wants to throw. It's Gabriel. Fires to the middle. All kinds of room to throw that one in there. And an explosive play. Has him on the move, and he gets it all the way to the 48-yard line. Nice job executing the four-minute offense. You know, they practice this throughout the week, having a lead late in the game, running plays, to just get enough to get first downs to stay on the field, and they are executing this four-minute offense to perfection. On the ground, trying to pull the plug on this clock. And this one will be stopped for no gain. Awesome job up front by this defensive line. Being so good at the point of attack and eating blocks, eating some double teams that allows these linebackers to run free, unencumbered, and get to the football. They'll probably bleed every second possible off this clock before they snap it. They'll go right back to the run. Yeah, and I'm not surprised. I mean, you put the ball in your best player's hands. Like, late in the game, you've got to trust your guy. I'm interested to see what they do here on third down coming up. Let's call it third and interesting, right? Top clock ticking down. Do I trust my QB to throw the football? I got the lead. I want that clock to continue to roll. We have arrived at the two-minute warning, a one-possession game as this offense tries to hold on. This is a big third down. If they can move the chains, they can just about salt this game away. From the gun, wants to pass. Already find a hole in that secondary. And he'll take it all the way. They couldn't bring him down. Touchdown, Oregon! 
And you know, late in the games, offenses sometimes get conservative when they got the lead and they got the ball. I love this offense. They were aggressive. They got another score added to the lead. Now you're trying to salt this game away. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. So that scoring drive took only six plays. And they finish with a big play, a touchdown strike from the 46. On the move from inside is five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Spartans have it back on offense, hoping to play some good ball. Back to pass, it's Childs. Got his man quickly. The offense gets a quick timeout at this point. Every second is precious. Set up for second and short after that completion. He's looking to throw. Grabbed in the middle, it's Brown. And he's knocked down immediately, but not before he moves the chains. And when you run those drag routes, it just takes a little bit of know-how. And when I say that, the receiver's got to understand, find space. My quarterback's going to find me. He's looking for that space at the same time. Nice throw, nice catch. Way to get the first down. Sprinting to the line to try to get this one off. Clock's running. To the air on first down. Got it in the middle. It's Foster. To the 43-yard line and a first down for this offense. That is an excellent throw by the quarterback, finding the window between the zones and delivering that ball on time. The Spartans come to the line in the hurry up. They'll throw it on first down. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Looking to pass on second down. Grabbed over the middle. It's Belly. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play, trying to preserve every minute possible. And the Spartans come to the line with a fresh set of downs. He wants to throw it again. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. Defense were always trying to get some tips, you know, break on the football, get a tip, get it up in the air. Nice job by the player breaking on the football and forcing the incompletion. This offense has a second down play. Looking to throw, it's Childs. Got his man downfield. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. Nice play design on that one. You make it easy for your quarterback, too, because it's easy to see what's happening right in front of you. Over the middle of the field, you can see where defenders are dropping. You can see where the soft spots are in zone coverage. And just a really nice job by the QB locating his guy and making an accurate throw. Going to work on second down in the red zone is still some ground to cover to pick up that first down. He's looking to throw. Snagged in the middle. It's Brown. They'll get it down to the eight-yard line on that throw and catch, and the defense is backed up against the wall. The terrain gets rough this deep in the red zone. Third down. They can pick up the first without scoring. He's got it. He gets it oh so close to the first down marker, but I think he's going to be a touch short. Just not able to shake enough defenders and comes up a little bit short. And I think a lot of times on third down, Reese, you bet on your guy. When you're an offensive guy, you say, okay, he's going to break a tackle. He's going to get north and south and somehow get the first down. Nice tackling by the defense, understanding where they had to get to and forcing the fourth down. 
They're throwing for it on fourth down. And the pass goes incomplete, looking to make things look a little tighter on the scoreboard, but that's going to do it.